First off, I see we have some nominal scales here. Uh, they can't truly be nominal, can they? I was strongly disagree to strongly agree. So let me just change these over to scale real quick. And this one isn't the scale. This is nominal. It doesn't matter. We won't be using that. The first thing I want to do is actually not a factor analysis. First thing I want to do is look at the reliabilities. So I'd go to analyze, uh, scale, reliability, and just see if there's anything that, oops, that doesn't fit very well within each of these factors. So I'm going to stick those for AC in there. I'm going to go to statistics and check the box for scale if item deleted. And then hit OK, OK. And see what we end up with. 828 is pretty good. Is there a way to get better? Not really. So we'll keep all those items for now. We're going to do the same thing again for the other ones. The number we're looking there for there is anything above 0.7. Um, so that looked really good for AC. Let's go to NC. And we have 753, not bad. And no way to really improve that. So we'll go to the next one. There we go. C's, CC. Okay, 741 is pretty good. And again, no way to improve that. So... The next thing I want to do is go look at the wording. Here we go. Here's the wording of these items. I assume these are on strongly agree to strongly disagree. Yeah, uh, the opposite, I mean. Here we go. Strongly disagree to strongly agree. Good. And there's no, like, not applicable, which is good. So this organization, I'm going to look at these ones here. Make sure they're reflective. They seem to be reflective, just looking at their reliability scores. Uh, let's see. This organization has a great deal of personal meaning for me. I do not like the part of family in my organization. Oh, I do not feel like part of family in my organization. That's reversed, obviously. You caught that. Good. I really feel as if the organization's problems are my own. Yeah, so these are all reflective. Good. Let's look at these. The organization deserves my loyalty. I would not leave my organization right now. Yep, more loyalty stuff. And these ones, it would be very hard for me to leave my organization right now. What? All right, that feels a lot like NC. Uh, one of the major reasons I continue to work for this organization. Okay, so this is uh, changing costs, transition costs. Um, but boy, those are very similar. I'm guessing CC and NC are going to load really strongly together. Uh, so let's see what happens. Factor analysis. Let's go ahead and throw these all in here. And descriptives. I'll do a camo and reproduced as usual. Extraction. I'm going to leave it as principal components for now um, because we do expect those um, factors to be highly correlated options. I'm going to suppress small coefficients. I'm also going to sort by size. Um, well, not to start. Let's, let's leave it off to start. And I didn't suppress properly. Let me go back and suppress one more time at 0.3. Uh, that just cleans it up a little bit. Easier to read. Our camo is good. No major concerns here in the extraction column. It extracted four factors, which is not what we expected. Uh, we expected three. So we go down the pattern matrix, we see what happened. What a mess. Um, we see that, oof, the only one's loading highly on AC, aside from this one, NC. Um, uh, AC6 and 5 that are reversed, maybe AC2. NC6 is a problem. Now we said that CC and NC would probably load together. You can see there are some loadings together here. Um, NC, strongest loadings are these top two. Otherwise, they're all over the place. And then CC is not great anywhere. So what could we do? We could take a really fierce approach just right off the bat and try to reduce this to a couple items per factor, which isn't ideal, but it might end up with the most, um, what's the word, valid factors. So if I were to do this just right off the bat, I'd say let's keep AC5 and 6, NC1 and 2, and CC maybe 5 and 1. Let's just let's pretend that that's what we're going to do real quick. Let's just see what happens. So again, that was AC5 uh, and 6 we're going to keep, so we'll drop everything else. Again, this is, a, this is an extreme approach. I just want to see what happens. Um, NC1 and 2 is what we're keeping. We're going to get rid of the rest of the NC. And then CC, we were talking about maybe 1 and, uh, you know, I'm going to do 1, 2, and 5 is what we'll keep for CC. So get rid of 3, 4, and 6. And let's just see what happens. Terrible, not terrible, uh, you know, middling camo, 
nothing terrible here. We are explaining 60% of the variance, but look, we only have two factors extracted. We come down here to the pattern matrix, and NC and AC loaded together. If we were to force this out to three, let's just try that real quick. Forced out to three, boom, continue, okay. And we end up with 72% of the variance explained, pattern matrix, and they do load separately. Look at that. So if nothing else works, there's your solution right there. Back here, if we were to take a softer approach, let's go back to our factor analysis, stick everything back in, let me stick everything out first and then everything back in. And extraction, uh, totally based on eigenvalues right now, hit OK. Then we go back down to the pattern matrix, here it is, and we take a softer approach. First thing we do is get rid of all the hardest stuff, the cross loadings. So NC6, clearly a problem. It loads so strongly with the ACs. So that's the first one I'm going to drop, NC6. Take that out. Okay. Back to pattern matrix. And, ooh, we have three factors now. Not clean factors, though. Yikes. Uh, for AC, what a mess. What a mess. AC and NC are loading together very strongly. Um which is surprising. I thought it'd be NC and CC. Okay. So what do we do? We take. I would take off the strongest loadings from AC that are on uh, NC. So in well, or you know what? Let me take off NC four because it's the one loading strongest uh, cross loading. So NC four, you're gone. NC four is right here. You're out of the family. Next pattern matrix. Here we go. That looks a little bit better. Um, Ooh, strongest cross-loading right now is CC5. I'm going to take that guy out. CC5, I'm going to make this bigger. There we go. CC5, you're out. Next, get out of the pattern matrix. And next, strongest cross-loading is uh, CC2. Yeah, CC2, so you're out. Factor analysis, CC2, gone. Pattern matrix. You notice I'm just doing this based on the strongest cross loadings. Oh, that's a problem. All right, but we only have three items. Oh, four items. CC1 is a big problem. How did I not see that before? Yikes, CC1. CC1, you're gone. Pattern matrix. Here we go, that changed things up a bit. AC1 and four are a problem. So let's drop both of those together. AC1 and four, typically I wouldn't do that, but I'm short on time, I have a meeting I have to go to. So, looking better, look at that, AC's pretty good. NC, not terrible, and then CC. Wow, we came up with something, cool.